you know, you decided to, you know, meet on this platform. Hi, hi, Francisca. Hi. Yeah. We'll just start in uh, maybe four minutes. Nivedita is here. Hi, Nivedita. Thank you so much for arranging all this. So it would be a wonderful interaction, uh, you know, with our newly formed society, the Association of Coordinated Researchers, and the INCOA, which is, you know, the global platform for the quaternary researchers. So um, I'm glad that, uh, you know, you all could <coughs> make it to the session. And uh, I hope uh, you would be able to mobilize uh, quite a few numbers from uh, the Indian subcontinent to join your um, commissions and to tell them about, you know, what uh, what are the good things when we join uh, the quaternary research in a in a global perspective. What what good does it, comes out from it? So it would be really nice. So we, we are also recording this meeting so that we can prepare the minutes of the meetings and circulate amongst you all. And as Martin had, uh, you know, he wanted. So we'll do that. And um, our ECR team would be uh, taking up points of everybody who's saying and uh, putting it here. So yeah, till we start. So anything you want to say, uh, Maria? Just informal, I know. <laughs> Akash, you have, um, uh, you're there, yeah? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So Akash would be our uh, moderator today. He'll be moderating the, uh, the entire uh, session and uh, with your talks one by one. And uh, it would be nice that after each talk, may we have a few, you know, question answers from the people who are interested. And uh, we'll tell them to write it in the chat box so that we can just read out. Uh, and if they want to, you know, uh, interact uh, themselves, so we can ask them to uh, raise their hands and unmute their audios so that they can be in a direct, uh, you know, connection with our uh, speakers of today. So that should sure, okay. Sure, ma'am. I'll mention that. Yeah. So in one minute we start. I think it's time. So uh, I hope the YouTube uh, streaming people are also there and uh, looking after the YouTube thing. Uh, so that, you know, some of us, uh, because there is uh, a limit of uh, people joining here, so we uh, stream it through YouTube also live, so that our other students and other members could join from there, see it live from there also. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Webinar. So, yes, it's also live on YouTube, so no worries. It's all good. Fantastic. So I, I'll take this opportunity to start the session. If everybody's ready. Yes. Okay, you can start, Javin. Yeah. Perfect. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, and to our European guests, uh, welcome in a Benvenuti. Uh, this is a nice interaction that session that we have planned between uh, the early career researchers of the Association of Quaternary uh, Researchers in India and the International Quaternary Association. This is continuing and uh, ends our uh, series on uh, uh, early career research webinar series, which uh, we had eight uh, installments of that ended last week. Uh, we had a nice turnout of about 200 uh, people every session, both on YouTube and Google Meet. So thank you for your wonderful response. And we'll probably get to know more about it in our uh, in the next issue of uh, Quaternary Chronicles, which is our newsletter. Uh, in line with uh, in line with keeping with, uh, you know, uh, abilities and developing uh, avenues for uh, early career researchers. Uh, Inqua, the, I mean, Dr. Uh, Anupapa Krishnamurthy and Dr. Nivedita Mehrotra of uh, Inqua reached out to us, asking us to develop this interactive session with you all. And the session primarily looks 
to you know uh, give information on inquas mission and structure as well as uh, funding opportunities and uh, other opportunities for early career researchers uh, we also look at activities and involvement of uh, ecrs ECR, uh, in online and web based activities on various platforms managed by the ecrs such as facebook and twitter and the challenges and strategic changes in the past couple of months and our immediate future uh, primary activities of the ecr involves uh, editing and managing quarterly perspective which is a new magazine which is the magazine of the, the ecrs of inqua and uh, it also gives an in, and this session will also give an insight to the neptune project undertaken by the by some of the ecr team of uh, inqua uh, inqua and auqr has an in, as an intimate relationship because uh, a lot of uh, an impetus for the formation of uh, both quarterly chronicles as well as aoqr was taken by a lot of us who met up in uh, the last inqua in dublin when you know times were a little better but in uh, to move forward in our current uh, uh, in the new normal we thought it will be an interesting uh, interactive session to have with uh, the ecr teams of both aoqr and inqua so to the session will have five speakers and we'll have question and interactions with the speakers uh, at the end of each of their presentations because they'll be looking at different themes and titles i request the audience to kindly drop the questions in the chat box so that we can uh, ask them as and when they come up at the end of the, their particular talks if you miss out on it don't worry we can always get back to your questions at the end of the session uh, as uh, ma'am already pointed out uh, we'll be uh, streaming it also on youtube along with google meet so we have the ecr team on both ends to curate the questions on this note i'd like to ask uh, dr francesca ferrario uh, who's the terrestrial processes and deposits and history commission representative and uh, and associated with the università dell'insubria from como italy to please uh, share a screen and start presenting with the first of i the... will share the screen for her uh, akash yes ma'am I will share the screen for her because I'll I'll be presenting. Yes, ma'am. Please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So waiting for the screen. I want to thank you all for the opportunity, the invite, and uh, um, I'm happy to to introduce Inqua, what uh, what we are, what we do, and uh, I will just say a few. Uh, uh, a few words of overview, and then I will leave the floor to the other ECR uh, uh, representatives uh, who, who will speak in more detail on some of the of the things we are doing. So, if we can just move to the next uh, slide. Okay, so INQUA is uh, uh, the International Union for Quaternary Research. Uh, and it is a, a global geoscientific organization established in 1928. So now it has a quite long history. And uh, it is the representative body for uh, quaternary science. So as you may imagine, uh, several disciplines um, are involved in quaternary science. And so to understand uh, in mission and, and goal, the keyword is network because uh, um, INQUA seeks to promote networking, uh, scientific networking among the different uh, aspects that belong to quaternary science. And uh, um, the priority is uh, toward the early career researchers and the scientists from developing countries. I put here the link to the website inqua.org uh, where you can find full information on uh, what inqua is, what we do, and also how to be involved. But in a few minutes, you will learn uh, much about this. So we can just uh, move to the next one. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. There, there is a few seconds of delay with my uh, lockdown uh, 
position in Italy. So yeah, um, what in Quadu is to uh, support with the um, small grants, so with a few amount of money, projects and meetings and uh, activities. And I will deal, um, I will speak uh, a few words on the new funding scheme that will be in place for next year. So this is a brand new um, funding scheme. So um, single, uh, single researcher or group of, uh, of scientists can apply either for a multi-year project or single year project. And all of them should have a clear uh, uh, scientific goal, so to improve networking on a um, quaternary topic. Another possibility is to apply for a standalone conference. So uh, uh, it's like a one and done. So if you want to organize a small meeting for 2021, you can apply for this uh, pot of money. And the last one is uh, the skill enhancement activities, which uh, um, is devoted to training and mainly for uh, ECR and for uh, uh, developing countries. So it has a, um, a proper categories for these kind of activities, which can be uh, lab activities, field activities, but also online training. On the website, you, you will also find the, the full um, the full list of, of fund funding that can be can be supported. Uh, what I want to stress here is that uh, there is no support for salaries or stipends, but all the money should go to um, promoting meeting and networking. And most of the money uh, should be conveyed to early career or developing countries researchers. Uh, so the, the next uh, slide is uh, um, on how to apply. And the process is really, really easy. So you just need uh, to um, fill a project form, which basically asks for title and a short description and your name and um, nothing more. Um, you can apply for a maximum funding of uh, 5,000 uh, euros per year. And my suggestion is that since the uh, deadline is quite soon, it is late November, um, my suggestion is that if you want to propose a project, you should uh, contact uh, the commission officers or the ECR committee, because uh, our role is to uh, put all the proposals together. So if we get a similar project, we will ask uh, um, people to join, uh, because our role is to... to um, to be more efficient and for promoting networking, if we get similar proposal, the key uh, theme will be to merge them together. So again, if you want to apply, please reach us and we will be happy to, to help you or the commission officers. And uh, with this, I just leave the floor to Nivedita, who will uh, uh, speak in, in more detail on the uh, different commissions. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, Francesca. Uh, before that, I would uh, suggest if there are any questions regarding the funding, uh, feel free to ask because this is the time we are here. You can hear from us. Are there any questions, Akash? Uh, currently, we don't have any questions, ma'am. But uh, I think as and when questions come up, I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, if anybody wants to unmute your uh, mics currently and ask a question directly, you guys can do that. So the floor is open. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not an ECR, but uh, on behalf of the ECR, I just wanted to know, uh, Maria, if uh, these the funding that you give, like five k euros, is like quite a good sum to start. So is it is it for the projects that they can make their new projects, or is it? In some projects that INFA or the commissions are, are working in, 
or how does it go like their new proposal is absolutely their new work that from the you know wherever they are working like in this case most of us are in the indian subcontinent so do you want proposals from them from this area or do you want uh, the the funding can be given to them if they join some of your projects there how does it go? okay so uh, you have uh, both the possibilities are good because uh, all the projects is, even if they are multi year each year they uh, should send a report on the activities and they will get fund for the next year so funding is on a yearly basis oh. and you can either uh, propose a new project or join someone who is already um, already ongoing with uh, with their projects uh, in this case again the commission officers are the best uh, um, people to contact because they they are aware of all the activities all the projects and they will uh, uh, answer and, and lead you to the right person Okay, thank you. And uh, one more little one. So, uh, if they are applying, for example, they are applying for a certain commission, Paracom. So, do, do they need to first register as members there, or um, can they send directly? They have to become members. Okay. Yeah, they have to become members, but it is again super easy. I think uh, um, later uh, it will be shown how to do. You just need to fill a form, just typing your name and your address and it's done. One more question on behalf of all the ECRs here <laughs> who are listening to you. Uh, was that, uh, what do you, uh, in India, ECR is uh, like uh, how much, like you, you've done your PhD and then uh, is it 35 years of age or 40 years of age or is it, how, how do you calculate uh, ECR, whether he's... We'll uh, come, the, come to that, we'll come to that in the talk later. Oh, fantastic. Okay, Nivedita, all to you now. <laughs> Thank you. I'll start presenting again. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. I now invite uh, Dr. Nivedita Malhotra from BSIP, who's also the Paleo Climate Commission representative to give her talk. Okay, so this is where uh, Francesca left. Uh, just to sum it up, uh, basically INQUA has revamped its funding policies because earlier we had uh, IFPs, which were designated to a said group uh, and which was under a particular commission. But because of the changing times, we had to revamp things. So this is the new format. Uh, we are just beginning. So as ECRs, we are also uh, having little information, but it's just that this is a big forum. We wanted to share this information. For details, you can contact us and the commission officers, of course. And this is a funding which will help you create a group for uh, or a group or a project for a year. And you can use this for meetings, for uh, travel and other things which uh, she had listed and will be soon be listed on our website too. So, okay, now beginning uh, with uh, my presentation, just for the everyone who is not much aware of INQUA. So basically INQUA uh, uh, is, uh, has a particular structure and a functioning a module. So the, uh, the apex of this structure is the International Council, which has uh, representatives from 53 countries. Um, uh, from these 53 countries, there are voting rights to the people, uh, the countries who are uh, fee paying members. And uh, the basic work and the commission uh, work is being done by the Executive Council, which designates and designs uh, the policies and the decisions and reports, all this to the International Council. Uh, for now, these are some of the officers of, of uh, the Executive Council. We have our President, uh, Thais Van Kofshotel, uh, and, uh, and the General Secretary, uh, Eniko Kathe and Magyari, and so on. We have Brian Chase, who often helps us as ECRs to look into the Commission work, and of course, our Vice Presidents and uh, our Vice President Communication and Publication. So, so why uh, we uh, come down to Commissions each time? Because Quaternary has many phases, so to bring together all these phases in groups, we have grouped down ourselves into these commissions. Uh, we call them in short forms as CMP, HAPCOM, PALCOM, SACCOM, and TERPRO. These are the names. 
so basically uh, cmp uh, is uh, to under uh, the group moves in the direction of understanding the climate and the anthropogenic impact in the coastal areas the human and the biosphere uh, looks up to the interaction of the paleo environment and the individual communities which are like species and their relationships between their environment and the changes which has happened during the quaternary uh, we have our uh, the president of this commission happens to be a very good quaternary researcher from india and i personally know her and uh, dr anupama krishnamurthy and we also have in the office bearers uh, uh, dr kumar akhilesh in this commission and then uh, then is the palcom commission which uh, deals with optimization of the paleoclimatic data and how to reconstruct the climate through uh, understanding the paleoclimatic changes and the abrupt transitions in the quaternary uh, sorry Oops. Uh, then we have the uh, SACOM, Stratigraphy and Chronology. This commission looks over the changes in the quaternary. Uh, it basically brings together the quaternary researchers who are working on stratigraphy and chronology and to establish them and then communicate it to the International Union. And of course, our terrestrial process deposits and history. This commission is interestingly working on the new insights and the new rational, rationals and changes in the science and especially involving terrestrial processes. So the structure of these commissions starts with as president, vice president, secretary, and of course the ECRs. And also we have scientists from all over the world who are in the advisory council. INQA primarily works through our uh, publications also. We have an international pu publication, Quaternary International, which has now published around 558 journals uh, by, by August 2020. And then we have the Quaternary Perspective, which also gives an overview of the projects and the happenings in INQA and uh, how the inter-Congress uh, period has been working through towards the funds which we have generated and, uh, and how the commissions are functioning. And of course, the ECRs. And it is primarily managed by the ECRs and inputs from the commission heads, of course. Then uh, uh, INQA has an international event, uh, which is one of the major events of INQA, apart from the sub-events going on in the commissions, is the International Co uh, Congress, which is held every four years. And the last one was held in Rome, Italy. The next one will be held in Rome in Italy, uh, where we will meet Francesca. And uh, practically, we all have never met. And this, this is us, the ECRs. So I'm just roughly going through the names. We have Annie and Martin in CMP, and Alio and Kim in Hapcom, and Embosa and me in Palcom, and Saurav and Mokshan and Sackcom, and Maria Francesca Ferrario, the chair, we, whom we call Francesca, and Gudo, who also looks up at the QP work. So basically, when I joined as ECR, it was very exciting, and I felt like one of the members in the International Council, in like in the movies of Avengers. This was pretty much how we normally used to uh, meet and work. Um, so, uh, and it was fun learning so much in all these months from you all and. Uh, so how we work is that this commission uh, com established our ECR committee in 20, uh, 2012 and to represent and support young scientists in INQA. We are selected every inter-Congress period. Now comes to the point where Dr. Minita uh, Fartyal was asking. So the ECRs are basically young researchers who have uh, within the last eight years completed their uh, PhDs and, uh, and or the last degree in which they are involved. Basically, it's the PhD and time and not taking time off from the family responsibility into consideration. Then uh, the ECR committee also uh, is ratified uh, during the inter-Congress periods. And uh, last it was ratified in last year, July 2019, where I was in the state along with the rest of us. So our mission is to uh, amalgamate all the information from all these commissions and young scientists through the ECR network and also giving out this information um, of, uh, which is generated from our decisions and the EC uh, decisions to the social media and the INQA website. Uh, we represent the uh, views of the ECRs and provide fee uh, feedback to the commissions and to the other uh, part of the ECR community as such, if we get any communication from them. And we also promote the networking activities like one which is happening today. And uh, so that we can bring together the scientific community and others, especially the young scientists together and into the roof of INQA. So this is how we meet every month and we direct our activities through online meetings. And uh, we have editorial activities, quarterly perspective about which uh, Yudo will share more. And we also um, update all this information through the web platforms and we will update you all about this and how we function. 
and then we communicate to the executive council from time to time and francesca goes to the meetings and she gives our opinion and then takes their opinion and most of the time we are in agreement but sometimes we are not but it's okay so trying to involve ourselves into different projects and uh, we now are, that's what we are shifting from the the normal platform to the online uh, platform so that's how we are working and of course we get all the support from all the commission officers and the uh, executive council, uh, council so it's just that we work as a team who are a very uh, apart and distinct but we try and do things as much as possible so just quickly going through a run through i would request everyone here who is not part of inqua to join inqua there are some very easy steps you can join more than one commission or all the commissions if you want so this this is a simple step to join the commission you open the inqua website inqua org you have all the information about the inqua org and this is the commission tab you hit the commission tab and you have the list and say supposing you have to join palcom you click palcom and then you have this uh, another dialog box coming over here you have to join palcom there and uh, then there will this small form which you will just fill and automatically it will generate uh, information in your email and you will be part of inqua so it's as simple as that thank you ma'am thank you ma'am if anybody has any questions i kindly request you all to either type it in the chat box or just unmute yourself and ask it directly so pretty much we are uh, most of the time in interacting like this online so it's was our normal since last year <laughs> which is now the new normal for everyone so please feel free don't be shy if there are any scholars who want to ask us anything other for the last date of applications deadline is november yeah Le yes. end of yes. november end. Uh, is there any chance of you know <laughs> Extending the deadline. <laughs> I think Francesca would be able to answer that better. Francesca, are you there? Because, you know, many of them uh, are voted today only. So you know, and we have a festival of lights in mid mid November. So it's a festive season here. So I don't know how much would like to uh, could avail this opportunity for this year. Otherwise, it all goes to next year because you said it's yearly. So my own worry with that. Okay, yeah. Um, November is an internal deadline, so uh, at least the communication that you will to you will propose a project should come by that date. But then the final decision will come on January, and usually um, between November and January, uh, the executive committee asks to improve or to change work proposal. um are not fitting the 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 remit or maybe you are asking for something that cannot be funded so yeah there is um, some flexibility but at least the information should come by november yeah okay all the ecrs listening here please act accordingly and you should try to communicate within 30th, 30th november to uh, maria about the proposal if you want to avail this opportunity for this year so we have there is a question uh, please take it back up yes ma'am uh, there is a question by uh, ms elora chakraborty uh, and uh, she is pursuing her phd in a topic concerning reconstruction of quaternary glaciations in himalayas she wants to know if there is any opportunity through the program for uh, her to learn more or take part in projects that are probably covering the her interests um, there's a okay yeah no 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 please yeah, continue please continue maria francisco oh but i don't have a precise because it's not my uh, my field of expertise i know there is a um, project on glacial termination termination i can check and um send you the the leader's name I think it's quicks or something like that on glacial termination. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, along with this line, uh, would the details of the accepted projects and whatever funded uh, projects that uh, Inqua is doing available online? So, 
people could uh, check up if anything uh, is related to their interest yes yeah, it's pretty much available in the oh, yeah it's pretty much available on the website and also in the quaternary perspective maria if uh, francesca if you would like to add something Oh no! The, the, it was just uh, yeah on the website. Uh, at least the names of the projects are there and the main topic. Wonderful. Uh, also, I'm assuming you'll have a contact information to the team leader or somebody who we could correspond to to get in touch with the with the particular projects. Please check the website. It has details of each and every officer, including the presidents, vice presidents, and the ECRs. So you can get to our ECR email or the commission head email in which you are interested to know, and also through the quaternary perspective to the person whom you want to contact. The contacts are completely available in all the uh, platforms. Fantastic. Perfect. Please Thank go you, to the third presentation so that yeah. yeah. Uh, I now invite uh, Dr. Annie Lau, uh, who's uh, affiliated to the University of Queensland, uh, Australia, and uh, she's a commission representative for the coastal and marine processes, and who will be discussing with us about the online communications and web activities of the ECR. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's nice to meet all of you here. I only have a very short presentation, uh, just a couple of slides. Um, I'm just talking about how we run um, our social media platforms, how we share news and how you can get in touch with us. So the main thing that the ECL committee does is uh, to maintain the Twitter and the Facebook pages. And apart from the INQUA ECL committee, every commission has their own Twitter page, um, as you can see in this slide, and also the INQUA official um, the official executive committee, they also have an INQA page. So you can follow all of us or um, the commission that you are interested in. Uh, well, we also have the Facebook page. I would say that we are more active on Twitter, mainly because I think uh, researchers like to go to Twitter to share their academic and their, um, their research outcome more on Twitter than on Facebook, where they share their personal stuff and to their friends. So there are more interesting stuff on Twitter. That's why it's more active. So the ECL committee, uh, 10 of us, we run the uh, Inqua ECL page. Uh, I think a couple of us are more active. We log in um, a few times a week to share things, to like tweets and to, to, uh, to retweet. On the Twitter page, we create original posts that share the newsletter articles so everyone can read the QP that we publish every quarter. Um, if you have submitted an application for project funding and if it is funded, we will promote your project. We will put a post up talking about your project. And I think later, Martin will talk about his project. So the idea of the INQUA funding is that it brings people together. It's more about um, creating workshops and conferences rather than just going to the field and doing laboratory experiments. So there are many posts that would call people to participate in different projects. And by participating means going to conferences and presenting in those uh, projects and in those uh, conferences. So we post news about different projects. Um, we call for proposals. For example, the uh, recent call, we would uh, post it as soon as the details are announced. And then there are so many seminars, especially online seminars that happens around the world every day now. So we share those news. We create posts on, the, uh, yeah, on our Twitter page. Sometimes we introduce ourselves, we have pictures and email address of every one of us and our commission uh, executive committee. So you can find our contact detail on the Twitter page and also on the Facebook page. And we have news and updates on the INQUA meeting. For example, the tw uh, 2023 meeting, the Twitter account would be more active right before the, the major meetings. And before, uh, the major meeting there will also be called for the new ECR reps. That is where I came to see the 
the call for new ECR reps before 2019. So I applied to be the new representative and there was an election in during the inquiry period. And at the end, 10 of us, uh, 10 of us were uh, yeah, elected. That is how things work. Uh, shall we move to the next page, please? Yeah, so apart from the original post that we create, we also retweet from other geoscience organizations like AGU, EGU, uh, AOQRL included. Um, there are also different ECL communities like the pages they have ECL, uh, yeah, uh, their ECL Twitter page and we retweet each other, we tag each other. So we are helping each other to promote geoscience and to promote our new research and new projects. We also post a retweet at a job ads for uh, ECRs that include PhD positions, uh, postdoc positions, and sometimes faculty positions that are suitable for ECRs. We would do, like, as you can see on the left-hand side of this page here, we, I, I just share whatever I see so everyone can can benefit and can apply for new jobs. I know ECL is always thinking about looking for jobs and looking for opportunities. So this is a space that we share things uh, generously and exchange information there. Sometimes we share new interesting papers and also news or articles on topics that interest us or are important to ECLs. Uh, sometimes in, in science conference, we talk too much science and forget that we are also human and we have uh, different diversity too. So our uh, committee is very diverse. So we shared news and articles on diversity issues like the Black Lives Matter uh, things. We, we also share some news, we retreat. Um, there are a lot of discussions on mental health issues, especially during the lockdown, and we would also focus on those articles. And career development is also another thing that is very important to ECL, and we want to support each other. So this is yeah, us. I would like to encourage everyone to follow us on Twitter, to retweet. You can tag us. You can yeah, put the, the hashtag or uh, at Inqua EC, underscore ECL. And if you have a Inqua funded project, feel free to drop us a message in Twitter as a private message, or also you can email uh, any one of us and we are always in touch by email and on other, other um, messaging device. If you get in touch with uh, one of us, uh, you want to promote your new project or new workshop, new conference, we will create a post for you. So the next slide, please. And this is another snapshot of our Facebook page. It is quieter, but we just share the major news, like uh, when we ask for, when we call for funding and when we want to like promote our next uh, major Enqua workshop or uh, conference into uh, 2023. But um, yeah, I would suggest you to stay in touch using Twitter and also uh, email while also subscribe and like our Facebook page so you get some news when we post there. So that's all from me. I can hand over to Guido to talk about the publication. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions. Oh, Annie, it was really yeah. good to hear from you. Uh, it's it's really nice. I'm I'm from AOQ area. <laughs> I'm not Hi. in this, but I'm yeah, yeah. Top of all these years today. So yeah. I want you to please retweet on the Association of Quaternary Researchers also from now on. And yeah. uh, really nice because uh, we are very young we are like just uh, not even a year old on 12th december we'll be a year old organization and we are still working on forming our uh, working groups you know we want to follow something like uh, inqua is doing like the commission so we were trying to do some working groups on those lines so that we can segregate the different uh, uh, you know uh, the themes and also work in a common platform so we're trying to do that 
Uh, very soon, uh, our website would also be launched. So it would be really nice to you know to work work hand in hand with uh, Inqua. On yes. Lines. And especially, uh, it's such a good opportunity for our ECRs here, so that you know they get this global platform and they write to you about their projects and they join you people and uh, you know uh, get funding from uh, Inqua. Because just now, as of AOQR, we really cannot promise any funds to our ECRs uh, as of now. But yeah, in the coming years, surely we would do that. So uh, thank you so much for this lovely presentation, and uh, I know it's it's a must to you know to, to do this um, uh, uh, this publicity and advertisement to be on the lighter side of side sites also. Yes, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, thank you again, and uh, Akash, over to you, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any other questions. If anybody wants to ask anything, you could uh, unmute yourself. If not, we can go to our next speaker, which is uh, Dr. Martin uh, Zieliger, uh, who's from the Goethe Institute, uh, Frankfurt, Germany, who uh, who's uh, looking at quater who's a quaternary perspective uh, editor as well as uh, involved in the Neptune project of Inqua. Uh, Dr. Martin, Victor? yes, I'm here. Um, Nivita, can you um, stop sharing so I can start sharing my um, screen? I've stopped sharing, Martin. You can go ahead. Yeah. So I think now you can see my screen. It's um, a PDF. Yes, sir. You can see my, my PDF about Neptune. Okay, I will make it full screen. Just wait a moment. Yeah, it's um, up to me to present our um, project, which was founded by the um, CMP Commission of INQUA last year. It is called Neptune, and it is um, organized by yeah, by five early career researchers, um, three from Italy and uh, one from Slovenia, and it's it's me from Germany. And it was last year in, at, at the INQUA meeting in Dublin that we uh, met first time and we had the idea about this meeting and we did the application um, and handed it in. And finally, it was funded um, yeah, starting this year. And um, yeah, as Annie, for example, said a couple of minutes ago, it's um, um, funded with about uh, 2,000 euros per year, but mainly um, for organizing meetings and for giving travel money to participants. So um, the, um, the main aims of our project is to organize five or four meetings, or four or five meetings, Let, let's see about it and how Corona develops. And um, so uh, it's to organize four, four workshops, let's say that, um, about how to investigate submerged landscapes. And um, this is a kind of big topic um, in Europe, especially in the Mediterranean Sea and the Baltic Sea, that um, since the last, last Pleistocene, um, lots of landscapes are lost due to sea level rise. And um, during the last years, there are several new methods um, developed, for example, using drones or underwater vehicles or something um, yeah, for example, um, doing corings from from floating rafts, and um, we are um, the five of us are experts for um, at least one of these um, methods. And it was planned to do it, for example, a workshop in Naples with uh, Gaia and Claudia, who are um, experts for drone surveys. And for example, there should be a workshop in Frankfurt for um, using a floating raft to gain sediment cores from lakes or from near shore. Um, environments but yeah due to corona we were not able to perform these workshops and so we had um, our first workshop um yeah, two months ago it was you it, it was online and um yeah we hope to to do the next workshops um during the next years and originally it, it was planned to do one workshop each year and so maybe we need to do um maybe two workshops in 22 or something yeah we need to check how corona will be in the next months and years. And yeah, and then it, it was also said by any, I think, or there was a, a short slide about um, Quaternary International and Quaternary International is the journal of the INQUA. And um, if you have a project, um, it's quite easy to get a special issue in this um, magazine, in this journal. And um, yeah, we have um, 
applied for a special issue there and it is also not that difficult to to get it um you are you are in need of around 10 abstracts of pot, of possible pers participants sorry <laughs> and um yeah they need to send you a title and the um, list of authors and a short abstract so that the editors of qe they they know that there's a potential for this special issue and for this topic and then it is um yeah given to you and you can organize it and this was done by us for a, a special issue for um yeah for our topic about paleo coast and if some someone of you has um, or is working in such an environment or is dealing with such topics he's also invited to take part in this issue there are some places left it's yeah o also up to you if you have something to um publish um ask one of us or visit our homepage or visit our fa um facebook page and get in contact to us if you are also working in near coastal environments so thanks that was from my part <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Uh, again, I open it up for questions. If there are any questions, you could uh, either type it in the chat box so we could ask them, or you could ask him yourself by unmuting yourself, unmuting your audio. Okay, again, I'm coming, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thank you, Martin. And, uh, you know, uh, I just want to tell the ACRs that it's a, such a good opportunity for all, all of you from different countries to join hands and work in a certain pro problem. And for that also, like, INCO is giving funds, so uh, you should, you know, tap this opportunity. And thank you, Martin. This is a lovely uh, project, Neptune. You've called it New Procedures and Technologies for Underwater Paleo Landscape Reconstructions. And similarly, you know, several other such projects can come up and a good team can be formed. So you uh, people, when you are joining these commissions, so there you can see, uh, you know, who else is there from the other countries working on the same directions and who have the same frequency and think alike uh, things so that you can form a bigger international project also. So this was a very good example. I'm glad, Martin, you came up with this, uh, with this talk. Uh, so that, you know, we all have an idea now how things are progressing in the in uh, with structure and the, you know, funding part of it. Thank you again. Thank you so much. No problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, Akash. Martin yeah. has to start presenting again, so you should stop. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Dr. Martin, if you could stop sharing your screen. Ah, thank you. Yeah, uh, I now invite uh, Dr. Guido Stefano Mariani uh, from the Università degli Studi di Cagliari from Monserrato to please uh, give us his talk. Uh, he's the primary editor for Quaternary Perspectives, and he's also uh, the commission representative for uh, tertiary process, terrestrial processes, deposits, and history com commission. Please, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Thank you again for uh, for being here. Uh, I'm I guess I'm the closing uh, one, uh, and I want to take back to what uh, what Annie said. Uh, and she talked a lot about uh, the communication on social media, uh, but of course, Inqua is also uh, working with some more standard. Uh, kind of communication, especially on the front of publications. So in that sense, uh, in INQUA we have a couple of publications which uh, uh, go and deal exactly with quaternary uh, topics and uh, uh, which we're all welcome to participate into. And uh, I wanted to talk about those. Uh, first of all, uh, it is the INQUA Journal, which is Quaternary International. Uh, this is the old bulletin of uh, the International Union uh, on Quaternary Science, uh, and uh, in time it was uh, passed on, and now it is published in partnership with Elsevier. Uh, so it is, in fact, an Elsevier journal. Uh, many of you probably have already heard about it, since it is, after all, one of the publications mostly related to quaternary uh, topics and quaternary science. Uh, at the moment, uh, a new editorial board has been uh, uh, put in place, 
and uh, things are uh, are kind of changing in the process of uh, publishing because essentially this is actually quite an uh, an old journal and uh, we passed last year the uh, volume 500 so it, it's been around for quite some time and it uh, it, it has uh, seen a lot of changes in time uh, and some are happening right now there is uh, a very diverse editorial board uh, with people from uh, uh, all continents uh, and from all backgrounds about quaternary science and uh, uh, essentially what is changing is that now uh, the structure is uh, uh, more related to uh, differentiate stuff. So historically, Quaternary International worked mainly with uh, uh, articles organized in uh, special issues, uh, in which guest editors would run content and would decide topics. Martin said something about it before. Uh, and uh, uh, next, next slide, please. And uh, in, uh, in this, uh, they are essentially uh, collected research papers. So uh, on a very specific topic, which regards uh, uh, a single group, which wants to uh, put forward the research in the, that disciplinary field. And uh, apart from that, there are uh, issues uh, which mainly pertain to other organizations uh, which want to publish in possibly the, uh, the results of a conference, the results of uh, an international workshop, this kind of, uh, of contribution. And it is mainly uh, organized as special issues. Uh, but uh, in the last few years, let's say, uh, there is an interest also in standalone manuscripts. So uh, people do not ex especially need to have a special issue going for uh, uh, asking for the publication of one uh, paper. Uh, it is still the main uh, way to publish, but some uh, big reviews, uh, big research uh, projects uh, which have uh, a lot of weight in the, the new uh, quaternary research can be published as well. Uh, in this, uh, the, uh, the idea is to welcome everybody and uh, the editorial board is always uh, uh, available to discuss uh, uh, the proposal of special issues. And uh, of course, we encourage you to do that. Uh, and this is for the uh, mainly the uh, official publishing. So this is uh, the journal. We also do have uh, a newsletter, which is Quaternary Perspectives. Uh, that one uh, newsletter. Thank you. Uh, Quaternary Perspective is uh, has also been around for quite some uh, some time, and uh, it's essentially always been the report from uh, the uh, INQUA commissions and uh, the, the INQUA projects. Now the things are changing a lot in that because essentially, you know, social media, uh, the presence of very fast communication. Uh, so what to expect from a newsletter which is published every six months? In a world like now, six months seems like an eternity because uh, we need fast news, we need uh, to be uh, involved and, and to be uh, informed of everything that happens right now. Uh, and for that, social media is perfect. But still, there are some topics that often stay behind because social media is perfect for short and factual communication. Uh, you have that on one side. On the other side, there are journals, so scientific papers, which are mainly interested in the science of that. But there is something in between, which is essentially how the big projects are working and how the small projects are. And to keep everyone informed of what is happening on a larger perspective. So not just the short communication of what 
people are doing of very small progress and not just the result of the entire project or the entire parts of projects. But there needs to be a way to just be informed on what is happening on a larger scale. And this is what we're trying to do with Quaternary Perspectives. So in these issues, we want to uh, mainly give interest to the latest global projects, to how they're working to with uh, the people they're working with, uh, and uh, to make people acknowledgeable and uh, spread knowledge of the existence of, of this project, also in a way to uh, inform about possible collaborations. Uh, this is also the place which is uh, uh, the normal uh, output for INQUA projects. So all the reports of stuff that have been done uh, through the years, they, uh, they're all been uh, published inside Quaternary Perspectives. And also we need updates from the regional associations. So every national contributions on what is happening in every single nation, in every single region, this is the place to do it. Because otherwise there are not so many ways to uh, explain to people what, uh, what is happening in Quaternary for a single region. So all of this contribution of clearly welcome and we encourage people to send us stuff regarding what is happening there with you. And because this is a perfect way to uh, particularly engage people because you will be known to essentially all of INQUA members. This is the newsletter that get posted to every INQUA member. It's put on the website, go check it. Uh, it's on the INQUA.org Inqua, web, website. And uh, it is a great way to essentially keep the community because social media can be, uh, can be really um, distracting in some way. So you have many different voices coming around all the time. Journals are very specific, but this is a good way, a good intermediate way to keep a community going. So again, Contributions are welcome, and uh, I wait for you to start publishing on that too. And thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I'd like to, uh, before we get into the questions, so give you some more time to type in your questions, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Anupama Krishnamurti, uh, who's uh, from the French Institute of Pondicherry, who's also the president of HAPCOM. To please come say a few words. Uh, good afternoon, uh, good morning, and everything to all. Uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, you're audible. So, uh, so I think uh, this was this has been a great session. I've been following all the presentations, and I think a lot of information about INQUA and its activities uh, have been shared by the ECRs. And I also think that this team of ECRs is doing a really great job with communication and with getting uh, all, all the information across. And it's true, you, you just had, and you probably have more questions for uh, the previous speaker, Guido. Uh, so the quarterly perspectives is becoming very dynamic now. And I do encourage also other people to participate. So one of the things uh, which I don't know if it was mentioned uh, uh, earlier on because I joined a little bit late. So this year, um, HAPCOM and PACE have to, are together organizing uh, a workshop which is called the PASIS workshop uh, on socio-ecological systems. And this is actually coming up on <clears throat> from 9th to 11th of November. I had shared uh, the link of that also with uh, Dr. Benita. And there's still time for you to register because this is a totally online workshop. And you can uh, register for this and attend it. Uh, so so it's it's quite uh, quite an open thing. And this is also a good. So because this time, because they, they were not able to organize the in-person workshop, they're doing it online. So the abstracts and other things 
the uh, deadline had closed but you can listen to the uh, format and you can see that it's quite an interesting one so uh, this is one very immediate thing coming up which i think for the ecr community it's interesting and so i encourage all of you to uh, join that uh, and as far as projects and other things uh, please feel free to contact commission presidents or uh, uh, ecrs uh, or i mean anybody whom uh, you think Uh, can be and we will you we will usually help you and uh, uh, get back to you and i do encourage ecrs to get together and write as many projects so there are we are also looking for projects in hapcom so specifically if you have uh, something which is uh, linking humans and the environment the broad topic of that where you have the interaction uh, you are most welcome to submit proposals to us and for anything else please feel free to get in touch uh, with yeah. thank you so much ma'am that's it uh, i'd uh, like to invite questions for uh, dr guido as well as the rest of the uh, sessions so far from anybody uh, either you could put in the chat box or you could uh, just uh, unmute yourselves and ask a question yeah can i ask one uh, not ask like just uh, for guido stefano thank you so much for giving us the overview about the quaternary international and the quaternary prospective newsletter i know newsletters are getting uh, slightly you know delayed because of these digital uh, online publications that we have in nowadays but uh, you know a newsletter has its own yeah richness uh, so uh, i feel um, i think uh, the especially the special issues that uh, the quaternary international brings about they are very very nice and they are very quick also and i've i've been i've been an author in several of them and they are like you know textbooks where everything is relevant to your kind of work like uh, just now quaternary international is bringing about the 5k of south east asia or something like this the volume so uh, and in that uh, very very nice papers and just the the 5000 years of the you know southern asian uh, things be it the climate be it the anthropogenic changes be it the cultural changes so everything you get you know in the 5k history so these special issues are very good the uh, ecrs can try about this and uh, they come in time and they the timely publications like in one year you get through the review process the revisions and it's through uh, so i feel yeah Uh, stefano that uh, this is this is really good that you know one should aim about uh, apart from their individual you know separate papers that we are putting in in this uh, journal i just wanted to ask you is in qua um, planning for some other journal also or you know it's just quaternary international because we are so many in quaternary and there are less journals especially from the inqua side so is there something else you would be planning in the future <laughs> uh well for the for the moment there is nothing that uh, inquas been thinking about because essentially already uh, the partnership to do quaternary uh, international is already quite uh, important and uh, quite uh, also time consuming so just managing one journal is uh, it, it is kind of a big task so essentially we're not thinking about new publications new journals to be uh, to be created uh, and to be put together this is not to be excluded in future but for the moment essentially uh, inqua is interested in making quarter international work better okay. so the idea uh, is to especially continue with uh, uh, with the special issues which as you said are uh, incredibly interesting in the fact that they take a topic uh, and uh, put together essentially everything that is known about them at the moment mm -hmm. and this is an uh, incredible resource in uh, in many cases uh, but it's not just that and uh, essentially we're trying to expand uh, in a way that 
basically there is a global perspective on on uh, all quaternary research so there is much more attention for example on what's happening in continents that were not as much uh, uh, investigated than before so there is uh, there is kind of uh, uh, an attention to that that uh, uh, was kind of lacking in the past decades and uh, uh, essentially the idea is to get that one better so in partnership of course in partnership with Elsevier uh, but we're trying to uh, to give the quaternary community some uh, some key uh, publications because of course uh, it's not the only journal of quaternary research there are many others which are debating on uh, maybe more focused topics uh, on the more uh, uh, on larger uh, larger reviews larger systems and so on so we know about which niche is uh, quaternary international now and uh, basically we see that it's working but it always can be better so that is the idea Actually, at least for now yeah thank you but you know uh, what, what, uh, yeah, I can be a personal view that in quite such established you know association it's, it's so old you have so many members so many member countries and then uh, you can also start on some online publications because they would get a better readability and you would get more papers and of course i know it's a hell of a job to get one journal in you know time on time publications it is there but uh, because you are you, it's such a big uh, you know uh, family so perhaps one or two online journals on these issues on quaternary could really be of help and because you, you have already established yourself so it would be easy for you to have partnership with elsevier or springer or any other publication units uh, to start and just take off take off by them so that is why you know this thing was coming to my mind <laughs> Yeah, yes, yes. No, and, and I agree. There are there is a lot that can be done, especially now that digital publishing has changed and is changing. So open publications are on the rise and uh, there might be a lot of space for new, uh, new ventures and uh, new ways to communicate on published journals. It would be interesting to look into. Uh, I know that they are not at the moment trying, but again, at the moment. So things are changing because, of course, we cannot stay in the same place all the time. And uh, that is uh, actually a field worth uh, investigating into. So who knows? Maybe in the next I few know. years. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More publications from Encore platform. Yeah. So, Akash, over to you. I think we are running late also. We should. Yes. Yeah. So, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Just before we thank end you. up, uh, yes, I would request yes. everyone who is uh, not part of Inqua Commissions to just go to our web page and join Inqua and feel free to understand how we work and the processes involved. You know, I'm just again and again mentioning it, but please join Inqua and welcome to our commissions. Thank you. And please join AOQR and please become members. And very soon there will be working groups like Inqua. So we want both, you know, the, the AOQR and Inqua to work hand in hand. So everybody listening to this, please do that. Please join Inqua also because none other global platform would be provided to you with so much of, you know, versatile, versatile group working together and so much of, you know, vision that is there. So, uh, yeah, please listen to Nivedita and join Inqua commissions. Just register yourself. And it's easy, you know, it's easy. And then later you can join me, okay, yeah, right, also. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much to everybody. Uh, on conclusion, I'd like to thank a few people who made all of this possible. First, I'd like to thank Dr. Anupama Krishnamurthy and Dr. Nivedita Mehrotra for the idea and also reaching out to us and organizing this entire uh, session. 
I'd also like to thank uh, the founding members and office bearers of the AOQR itself, our president, Dr. Vandana Prasad, our vice president, Dr. Pradeep Shivastava, our secretary, Dr. Binita Ma'am, our treasurer, Dr. Santosha, as well as other members such as uh, Dr. K. An Anbarasu, Dr. Vandana Choudhury, Dr. Rahul Mohan, Dr. Pat Chauhan, and Dr. Rakesh Chandra for all of their support and guidance, as well as our honorary uh, members, Professor Ashok Singhvi, Professor uh, Vishwas Kale, Professor Hema Achutian, and uh, Professor uh, Chamyal, whose advice and guidance has made all of this possible. I'd also like to thank the ECR teams of both uh, AOQR as well as INQUA for organizing this and on INQUA especially for uh, uh, your uh, sessions and your talks. Especially, and uh, special thanks to Dr. Uh, Francesca Ferrario, Dr. Nivedita Melotra, uh, Dr. Annie Lau, Dr. Martin Sliger, and Dr. Guido Stefano Mariani. I'd also like to thank Dr. Uh, uh, Nilay Govin from the other members of the computer section at BISP and uh, Christ College, uh, Irina Lakunda, for generally all our tech support, both in the ECR webinar series as well as uh, in the current session. And I'd like to also thank all the participants and attendees who attended the session, because without you, the session would be redundant. <laughs> And on that note, I'd like to extend uh, thanks to everybody and remind everyone to join both INQUA as well as uh, AOQR. And that's Thank you, the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It was really wonderful. I hope we have such meetings more, you know. So it would be nice that we can arrange such things so that we learn from the INQUA platform. Yeah, because we're just budding, you know, we just stepped in. So it would be nice to learn from you people and our ECRs would learn from your, uh, they, you know, it would be a very nice exchange program that could go on. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Nivedita, for organizing this, all, all of this, you know, to all these lovely speakers today goes to you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. We will meet again. Thank, thank you. Thank you, my ECR team and AOQR ECR team. Bye. Bye, everybody. So that's the end of the meeting. So and the minutes of the meetings will be communicated maybe 